Well, joining us now is Stephanie Lovitz, Ottawa reporter with the Toronto Star. Robert Fife, Ottawa Bureau Chief for the Globe and Mail. Uh, welcome to the both of you. Thanks for having us. So listen, we're, we're talking about the travel ban today, but of course this is in addition to the reaction that we got from India's you know, external affairs ministry saying that the, the statement, the allegations made by the Prime Minister earlier this week were quote, un, uh, quote unquote absurd. So, so how reliable is this intelligence that the Prime Minister is leaning on that, that ties essentially agents of India to, to the death of Mr. Najjar? It has to be reliable enough that the Prime Minister has gone ahead and done what he's done, which has set the cat amongst the pigeons, not just politically here in the country, but this has set off, there are global repercussions happening now about what Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is alleging the government of India has done. I mean, we're hearing about it from the Americans, from the Australians, from the British. And there is such an international furor over this arising that if there wasn't enough there, you have to wonder why did he drop the bomb in the first place. Yeah, good question. Uh, Bob, what do, you, what do you make? What's your assessment of the information, the intelligence that the Prime Minister is relying on here? Well, I don't know what the intelligence is. Nobody knows what the intelligence is because they haven't shared it. But uh, it has to be serious enough that the government sent the CSIS director to India to... Uh, discuss this and share this intelligence with um, uh, their Indian counterparts and the National Security Advisor for the Prime Minister Jody Thomas also went twice to India to talk to them about it and they uh, then discussed this or shared this intelligence with our Five Eyes allies which is the United States, Great Britain and Australia and New Zealand and maybe other allies as well so it's got to be something that's serious enough that they believe India was involved in this um, but uh, w what exactly, I, I don't know. I mean, the Indians have said this is the kind of intelligence that is, a, as, that is as reliable as George Bush uh, saying that there were, uh, administration saying there were weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, and it turned out not to be true. Mm -hmm. I think there should be an obligation on part of the government uh, to release this evidence or the, the, what they believe this intelligence is. Uh, at some point, because if you remember what happened with the uh, in Turkey, with the when the Saudi hit team went in and killed uh, Khashoggi, that uh, they were able to release all this intelligence. So if it's there, I think they should they should re uh, re release it to the to the to the public uh, without a compromising the police investigation or human resources or however they got at this. Yeah, you, you know what's, <clears throat> what I find interesting is the language that the prime minister used because he talked about when he stood up in the house, he, he didn't say we know that agents of India did this. He said there are credible allegations that possibly tie, you know, agents of the Indian government to, to this death. Uh, talk to us about the language, Stephanie. Why do you think the Prime Minister was being so cautious if they truly believe this happened? Well, the, what the Liberal government is saying, right, is that there is an ongoing criminal investigation at play. There are you know, police officers in the lower mainland of British Columbia, the RCMP, investigating this murder. And if the government is going to come out and drop evidence, you know, does that compromise the criminal investigation underway? It's also sort of shades of this debate that was really consuming the House of Commons in the spring about Chinese foreign interference and this question about when does intelligence become evidence and the distinction between the two. And so by threading the needle there a little bit, it seemed as though Prime Minister Trudeau was echoing some of the debates that were being had back in the spring about shedding some sunlight when you think you have intelligence, when you think something points to something, you need to bring it forward, bring it into the public domain so that people can know that this thing is happening. To get up on the floor of the House of Commons and flat out accuse um, Indi the Indian government of killing a Canadian citizen Th that would be so explosive, uh, I think, that you have to couch it, especially when, if there is no smoking gun, you can lay on the table. You need to be pretty careful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Bob, what do you make of that point? Because, yes, certainly uh, the, the Trudeau government was under the microscope earlier this year vis-a-vis uh, -vis China uh, interference. Now we're talking yeah, about Yeah, but this is not information they wanted out. Yeah. This was uh, information that was provided by national security people who were very frustrated that the intelligence that they had on Chinese foreign interference in the Canadian elections uh, were being ignored by the uh, top people in the government. In this particular instance, the Prime Minister is the one who's saying, we have this intelligence and it shows that India was involved in killing a Canadian citizen. If you're going to make that kind of explosive allegation in the House of Commons and as the leader of the country, you have an obligation at some point to put something on the table that we can all say, 
yeah, that looks pretty, it looks to me like they were really involved in this. Yeah, yeah, but you know, to, to the point that Stephanie's making about, you know, be China earlier in the year being in mind, it seems this is almost an in inelegant response to, 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 uh, to a different matter altogether. But you know, can we talk about the impact here on yeah. Canada-India relations? Of course, historically, we're allies, uh, historically both part of the, the Commonwealth, and yet we're now in this diplomatic row, if you will. How deep will this uh, impact be? How will this affect our relationship with India oh, going forward? We're in the deep freeze on this and we're going to be in the deep freeze for a long time, perhaps if, the, if there's a change in government. Under uh, Stephen Harper, there were good relations with Indian government, but M Mr. Trudeau came in, the, the, particularly the Modi government, has believed that uh, Trudeau was far more too sympathetic to, uh, to uh, seek uh, Sikhs in this country who were supportive of a, of a separate um, um, uh, uh, homeland. homeland in the in the Punjab, uh, the Canadian government has, does not support this. By the way, the, the government doesn't support that. But there's been this sense that they have not been willing to share intelligence with uh, Indian um, um, Indian intelligence agencies on some of these people who are promoting uh, separatism in the, in the Punjab, and they haven't stopped the flow of money. And so there have been very very bad relations to begin with. But it looked like. It was on the, we were actually over that hump. We were going to have uh, free trade negotiations which were being fast-tracked on September 1st. We now know the reason why the government hit pause on that. And then uh, the Canadian trade mission, which uh, Trade Minister Mary Ning was supposed to lead on October 9th, was also put on pause. We now know why that has happened. We've kicked out the head of the Foreign Intelligence a Agency in the High Commission here, and they've retaliated um, by kicking out a Canadian diplomat, the CISA station chief in New Delhi, and now they're having issued a travel uh, uh, advisory. Uh, you know, this, is, this, has got, this could really unravel here. And um, it's, it's, it's going to take some delicate diplomatic skills on the part of this prime minister not to let this thing completely go asunder. And we have our allies are not like they're not out there criticizing I India. Why? Because it's a very important country. It is a counterweight to China, which is the big worry that the United States and other Western countries have. And it's also a market of one billion people. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a we're in a real bind here, and I don't know how we're going to get out of it. Yeah, but you know, picking up on Bob's point, Stephanie, how important are other allies right now, like the United States, like Australia, the UK, in this row, uh, whether it's about supporting Canada's position or getting out of it to, to try to bring down the temperature? They're exceptionally important. I mean, they're, they're important in the sense that unless other nations band together to exert some degree of pressure on Prime Minister Modi in India to, to collaborate or cooperate, whatever it is the Liberal government is asking them to do, why would Prime Minister Modi listen to Justin Trudeau? They don't like each other. What is the incentive of, you know, on, the incentive on the point of view of the Indian government, why should they play nice on this one? I mean, international diplomatic norms would be the answer. The rule of law would be the answer. There are very good established mm -hmm. international treaties and all of these things to be the answer. But if Prime Minister Modi is not engaged and interested in playing ball with Justin Trudeau, maybe he'll think differently if Joe Biden gives him a call or Rishi Sunak from the UK gives him a call. You know, if there's pressure there, think about what happened with the two Michaels, just as, just as a correlate there, right? Um, and the way in which Canada really was able to muster up its, the allied nations to say to China, this is wrong, you should not do that. It came up all the time. Um, did that help in the end? Some degree of isolationism. Nobody can afford to isolate India, and nor can Canada. I mean, just from an immigration point of view alone, um, you know, India is the source is one of the top source countries for new immigrants into this country. Between 20 and 30 percent of all immigration to Canada last year came from India. It's Indian students that are you know coming to university campuses that are taking jobs. If Modi cuts off that flow of people to this country, that's catastrophic potentially for our economy. To say nothing of fertilizer, lentils, and all of these other products we provide. Um, so if Canada can't convince the allies to push a little bit on this, there's a lot at risk uh, for Canada in particular, but does that affect the self-interest of the U.S., of the U.K., of Australia, not in the same way that arbitrary detention on the part of China may have a similar implication? Mm -hmm. I mean, there may have been a way out of this if the Indian government had said, oh, uh, some rogue elements in the security service... Which has not been ruled did, out. Which, that has no, not been no, ruled and out it's at all. I mean, that is, that's the one... Personally, that's the one thing that may be a way out of this, that Modi could say, 
oh, we look, we found out that rogue elements did this. This is unacceptable. We're going to deal with these people. But he's not doing that. He's digging in. Um, and so I don't know how this is going to be resolved. The Prime Minister was trying to dial it back a little bit uh, uh, yesterday when he was saying, look, we don't want to provoke, we don't want to escalate. Um, but if Modi, if Modi decides, you know, you put us in this bind, you publicly uh, said we were responsible for killing somebody, we're going to stick it to you. And that's where we're at. We just don't know where this is going to go, where it's, how it's going to unravel. Well, we are watching it. Amazingly, we're just 48 hours since the announcement was made in, in, in the House Commons, so we'll keep watching. Uh, for now, Bob and Thanks. Stephanie, thank you for the thank time. Thank you.